We on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gon' talk. We gon' have fun. Woo. We be on fire. We be lit lit. lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big. Check, check, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not nothing. Ain't no more there. Walk on. I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. And I mean all, I mean all. I mean our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it. We're on it. Just Google us, Boss Talk Podcast One on One. We'll pop up first in line. But let me tell you, you got to become a member because y'all always see us on the street and be t talking about how can we support your brand. We love what y'all doing. Keep up the good work. This is how you can support our brand. On the each and every YouTube video, in the description section below right here, there's a, dis there's a link that says join our membership. Click that link. Follow all the instructions. You'll see all the exclusive content that y'all been asking us about for years now. But y'all just can't see it if you're not a member. So become a member today. Thank you for all the Man, support. listen, man. We got a guy in here today, y'all. Been on this interview for about a year and something now. About a little mm -hmm. bit over a year. And he in the building. He finally made it to the D, man. Dallas, Texas stand-up, man. Young Pimp is in the building. Yeah, what's going on, <laughs> what's going on man? man good, to, good to have you, bro. Like I said, I, I've been definitely uh, a big fan of just the fact of your dad, for sure. But just the whole UGK deal. But just you learning who you was and just asking questions and the way God delivered it to me, I couldn't be nothing but thankful. You know what I'm saying? So right, glad to have you on Boss Talk 101. I got to ask you, so okay. So you were born and raised in Houston or Port Arthur? I was born in Houston. I was raised in PA. Then okay. I came back to Houston. So, okay. So how old were you when you moved to PA? I was what, young. I was like first grade, so about five, first grade. six years old. Till how like old? That. So like 13 years old. Till 13, okay. And you were raised with your mom and dad in the same household? Were they living together? No, nah, they wasn't living together. They was apart. My mama, she been married since 05. So, you know, after they did what they did, she had kind of moved on. My mom was okay. always on the standpoint like, man, Chad, I ain't finna mess with you. I want something for sure. I know what type of guy you right. is. You know, charismatic player, you know, like, so. So they weren't together very long? Nah, they weren't together at all. Okay, but your dad was in your life. Right, yes. Okay, but did that affect you? Um, because I always ask everybody this, because everybody's affected differently, and some people even, although they think they're not affected, it, it affects them somehow subconsciously. Right. But um, not having your dad in the household, as much as sometimes he come pick you up whenever he can, you know, do that. Did it affect you not having him there all the time with you and having that support in the house? I would say, yeah, but it's to the extent, like, damn, we didn't really get to, you know, know each other, know each other right. like that, you know, and then on top of that, I was so young when he passed away, so... It's like we didn't get that real just right. knowing each other connection. So you were you were raised um, with a lot of regret in your heart? I wouldn't say regret because I do cherish the moments that we did right. have. But if if it's anything that I could wish for, it would be, to, be you know, to spend some more, more time, time just to get to know each other a little bit better. Do you be trying to ask other people for um, stories and stuff like that? I do it all the time. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I was about to say. I do it, man, one of my OGs. Uh, big Easy, man. It's one of them all the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm always calling them like, man, hey, you know, who is this person? Man, who is... Yeah. Hey, you know what happened in this situation? You know, like, things like that. But yeah. that's, that's definitely a person. But, I mean, it's, a, it's the list goes on. Yeah. You know, I'm always trying to tap in with the people who are around at, at you know, certain times and, and pinpoints of in his life. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But different. your mom um allowed you to hang out with your daddy pretty often because I see on your page uh, you have a lot of pictures with him or with your grandma and stuff like that. Right. So she was never one of those mothers that be like, because he ain't treating me right or he ain't, you know, not with me, you can't go see him type of person. Nah, right. Man, it was really, like, my mom I always been like that. Like, um, she is the type of person that, gonna let you make your decision you know like I can tell you and it's just for everything you know because nigga done messed around and did this and did that like to I bump my head and it's like I told you this but she the type of person that like if you go if you wanna jump out there and go see she, she gonna let go you bump ahead, your head you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. like so like it was one of them things where I wanted to go to PA and live with my mm -hmm. grandma and she wasn't against it at all like go ahead you know what I'm saying that's good and like uh, when I when it was time for me to leave PA I actually 
the year that I left PA, I was going to seventh grade. Uh, my grandmother had passed that year, but mm-hmm. it was like I was already like, right now I'm gonna go back to Houston this year, mm-hmm. da, da, da. So, like with her passing, it was like it just made you do it. Either. It messed me up, but it yeah. was like it wasn't a forced move. So I kind of felt a little bit better, you know, versus mm-hmm. her passing away and like I don't have no choice but to go back. You know right. what I'm saying? I was already going, so I was kind of like. I was using that to kind of like leverage the pain. If, if you get yeah, what I'm I got it. So tell me some story. Cause that's the one thing I, I um I hear stories about Pimp whenever he became the rapper, right? Right. I know you've probably heard some stories about him when he was a kid. That's what I want to know. If you've heard like your grandma before she passed away, did she tell you stories of how he used to be when he was a kid growing up? Did you get a lot of those type of stories? Not really. He was so young. Yeah, I know, not, but you know, if she told him some. Not really. Um, if it if it did used to be in there, used to be like more around the times where he was in high school. Mm-hmm. And um, tell me something she told you. Like to the point where you know he he ended up dropping out. Yeah, mm-hmm. I remember that. He was right there though. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, it's like I see what I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like, so it'd be like the debates that they used to have back and forth in between that time. Like, come on, Jed, you know what I'm saying. Like, but at the same time, he know what he got bubbling, you know. So it, it was like some some of that type of thing. Right. Not mm-hmm. not just too Cause, many. Yeah, because I noticed I can't. I, I told him I said one thing. I would love to interview somebody who can tell me the childhood stories, like. You know, eight, nine, ten, coming up, like right that that age. Right. You know right. what he was like, stuff See, like me, that. On my side, I just I read about it. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? Like yeah. In the, in the Julia, in the book. Yeah, in the yeah, film. In Sweet Joe. Yeah, Julia Beverly. Yeah. Julia yeah. Beverly. She been Shout on the show. Julia Shout too, out to man. Julia, man. For, yeah. I seen you and her doing a campaign when that book when all when all that was going on, right? Yeah, yeah. Y'all was going around and and everything, man. Julia Beverly, man. Like I said, she came down here, came on the show, showed us mad love here, man. Spent the day with me and my wife, yeah, and I, you know, I fuck with Julia. Yeah, we just, yeah. Uh, man, me and Julia just talked. What like two days ago? Mm-hmm. That's dope. Yeah, That's so, dope. Like, we always going back and forth. She's it's crazy. Actually, she was telling me. Uh, she texted me like, "Call me," but I was sleep. It was it was the middle of the day though. Huh? I went to sleep. I, I'm like, "Man, what's up? You still up?" It's like two, three in the morning. Now. She texted me right back like, "Yeah, uh, Jay was asking about you. He was trying to talk to you." Wow. I'm like, I'm like oh man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But yeah, we were always back and forth. Well, yeah, I like I like said when she came on the show, man. She's just a genuine person. Um, I told her I want to get her back on the show too. She just dope, brother. When it come down to her journalism and her journey, you know the way right. she stuck her neck out for doing stuff with the culture when nothing wasn't really going on in the South. The way she did it right. and the way it made it made it made a sound. You know what right. I mean? The so whole ozone movement, yeah, the ozone movement, ozone movement made a sound. Yeah, you know, so I, I think she dope for doing that. And I, I always bring on Boss Talk One Hundred One. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. She called me, got on me by something. I ain't gonna even say what it was. But she like <laughs> she called. Me and got on me a little bit about something but I was like I said I told us I didn't even think of it like that but just a dope person man like I said and she on her own dime just flew down ain't no no hesitation I emailed her she liked the email she emailed me back she came to town just like she said man old school yeah man we just talking <laughs> one of our conversations too from the, from the other day probably like three four days ago um, man, she had just sent me a number on her Blackberry. I'm like, man, she <laughs> crazy. Man. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't know people still have that. Yeah, she probably, if if it's like a top three, I'm definitely putting her as one of the people that still got it and, and that mess around with it, you know, like Dang. actively to go back and, Man, that's that crazy. make her different too, man. What did you think about the book? Like when you when you was when you finally got a chance to adjust it, and you know that your that Mama West had her hand in it. How did that make you feel just reading it and dealing with it after you got of age, of course? It taught me a lot. To be the book came out in twenty fifteen. Yeah. Um, honestly, I hadn't read it until up until the time that I went and sat down. Oh, okay. You didn't read it till you sat down. I didn't skim through it. You know, mm-hmm. I picked it up a little bit here and there, but. I be on the go, man. Because you have time when you sitting down, right? And I just man, so I was so young then I was here, there, there, trying to do this, that, that, man. So you think of you thank her for doing that because that gave you something to latch on to. Facts. And when you're going through your deepest trying this time, right? And it taught it taught me a lot, even from just how similar me and my old man cases were. Even like we had 
different charges, but at the what same did you process go to we prison went through. For? I went to prison for evading, uh, arresting a motor vehicle and possession of a stolen okay. gun. Okay. okay. But, um, like, even the process, but I was on probation for some other stuff back in high school, hustling. And I, I want to ask you, how was it? What what, what transfer unit did you hit first when you went? Garza West. You went to Garza? Look, the first three units I went to are the same first three units. My that he went to. dad too. went to. It's crazy. Garza okay. West, Dominguez, and San Antonio. Did you meet people there who knew him? I met one guy who claimed he was locked up with him. And wow. what did he say? He was just telling me how much of a, of, a, of a good person he was and, you know, like how he used to watch him be at the table writing in the day room mm -hmm. and, you know, like stuff like that. But, well, yeah, it was only that only one, one person. person. Yeah. That's crazy, man, because I, I interviewed uh, Fred Hampton Jr. And his dad, you know, he his daddy died. See, this is what Boss Talk is about. Think about this for a minute. You got to see your dad, right? Right. Your dad, you, he, you was with him till you was six, seven years old. Fred Hampton was killed by the police while Fred Hampton Jr. was in his mama's stomach. Yeah. And I went and interviewed him, and he came to Houston as well and interviewed a second time. But he ends up going, his daddy went to prison for, was it $71 worth of ice cream? And he ends up going to the same prison that his daddy went to once he got of age. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. Never meeting his dad because he was, it, it, the police killed his dad. You can see it on this movies out about this. And then after that, he ends up going to that prison. And you can see that on Boss Talk 101 where he talks about the experience of going to prison, to the same prison his father ended up going to. It's crazy. Yeah, it's the crazy. First, the first three units I went to, I was like, man, that shit can't it's be. It's crazy. Me. But let it get deeper, though. My, my, my felony judge, because I have felony cases and misdemeanor cases, but my felony judge, Janine Barr in uh, Court 182, she was the same judge who sentenced my father. Like, I stood no. before the same lady who sentenced my father. Wow. So she knew you was, a, that was your dad? I can't say that 100%. Yeah, because if she didn't mention yeah, it. I, I can't say that 100%, but it was just, you know, when you take a step back and looking at everything. From, All the coincidences. It's like, it's like, damn, is this really even a coincidence? Mm -hmm. Like. It's too, you know. It just be too. But what what was your takeaway from all parallel. of these? What all? What was your takeaway from all of these coincidences? Like when you sit back and really look on it, like because everything is a message. Right. What message did you get from all of this? This ain't the life. This ain't the life that I'm supposed to be living. But I'm getting seen. What I'm like. Okay, for instance, when I was there, I used to tell my mama this a lot. In order to know where you don't want to. Be it, sometimes you gotta, you gotta go to go that go place there. first. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's just how I was, that's, that was my whole outlook on the situation. You know, my from day one to the last day. Like, and so I just took it for that. It's like, you see how parallel like things can be. Like, do you wanna live like this or you wanna live like this, you know? But. So you I, learned I got, your lessons from it. Oh, ah, yeah, more yeah. Different. So you ain't never going more back. Got no I gotta ask you a question. <laughs> like, when you, when, did you even know I reached out to you when you was locked up? Nah. Don't you didn't mean. even know. My wife comes like, how did yeah. you know? I got, told him that. I, I was like, man, this nigga don't even know that. I, like, like, And I reached out to, to King, King, that King boy, and I right. sent your mom some money, I, I, you know, for you. It, it made it. It, it did make it. came it. through. I'm not gonna. He I'm not won't. Gonna say he that don't know, know who like all that, sending money. If you if you send it through them, it for sure can't. I definitely send it through them yeah. because that's who I met. That's who I made my you know alliance with. Yeah, for so. as because of Ronnie Spencer, they was over there recording. That was G. Shout out Ronnie too, man. Yeah. We just did a bad song. Yeah, I heard it. Ago. I heard it. Yeah. I'm 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 gonna talk about that. I don't know if now or or whenever they come on, but at any rate, I went over Ronnie's and that's how I met King Boy. Okay. And then he he was so genuine because he was like, I was like, man, I'm a big pimp fan. And he started telling me about you. And I'm like, I didn't even know that. And then that's how I started to know. So I started okay. hitting him up. He'll tell you the same thing. We okay. He started FaceTiming me. And I was like, man, <laughs> I said, what? I said, send him, get me. And he said, I got the text message. You know, I got receipts. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. so basically, he gave me all the information about you, about your mother. That's how I found out. Okay. And it wasn't just y'all. You got to realize from Charlie Lowe Jr. and all of them, I deal with everybody, bro. Little, mm -hmm. little Soldier Slim. I'm going to always be, I've, I don't know what it is. It's just the fact of, and I just did Flavor Flav Daughter. I just feel like, man, if there's anything missing in there, if there's anything I can do, I want God to use me for that. 
Right. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, that's real. So and then and then not just them, trap boy, whoever. I write, I write prison. I I, I dealt with that. So that's kind of how. And he's just brought it. That's how kind of how I do my ministry. Like I always reach back to the places where I was at and try to figure out what God want me to get out of the situation. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, make a lot of sense. So I mean, like I said, for you to be on that unit, you I, you was on the walls unit too. Yeah, I was on the, walls. the Golden Gates. I was on the walls. You know what I'm saying? I was at. I was on. The, my old man went to. If that's the case, I went to four units he was in. Yeah, because he I had to get out at the walls. Right yeah. Because I was just, the three I was thinking, I left the walls out. The three is Garza, uh, Dominguez, San Antonio, Darrington. Okay. And then the walls. Then the walls. Yeah, I went to all four. Went to all four of them. Yeah. You didn't go to Terrell Unit. He went to Terrell Unit. I didn't go to Terrell. I discharged from a, uh, from a unit called Hot Tower Unit in uh, yeah. Texas. Well, man, just glad you made it through it. Now, how was it being in, locked up? You get there. You pairing it up. You doing all the crazy stuff, you know what I'm saying? You have to work. Did you hit one? At one did you get one Aggie, please? Man, them people had me. Was you hitting on it? Was you in the field? Man, hell no. But you know they were going out there. Hell, not me. <laughs> How'd, you Look, me How'd you get out of it? How'd you get out of it? Because when I came through the door, I told him I got asthma. <laughs> <laughs> That's what a lot of people do. Okay. Yeah, I can't look, do it. Look, people was see you kind of sound different. Asthma? So I'm, I'm like, no, <laughs> hell no. <nah." laughs> but look. A lot of people, man, what they call that shit, man? Uh, damn, what they call it? Because you call it something different. AP, you like, want to hit on that Aggie, baby. Uh, host squad. Yeah, that's what that's, they call yeah, it, the yeah, host, yeah, squad. host squad. But I said one AP because that's what'll be on your paper if yeah, you got to go to that field. Nah, hell nah. <laughs> nah, hell nah. Because look, you know, they got partners and family and all type of things. So they told you before. what to yeah, say. Yeah, they already kind of hipping me to what things going to be like. So I get down that day. Yeah, well, what all wrong? I got asthma, man. <laughs> make sure, if I ain't make sure nothing, man, I'm done now. Going to the uh, pill window, refilling my halos and everything. We're going to keep it. But that's wasn't day. using it. <laughs> wasn't even using it. He's spraying it out. Man, I'm, just, I'm not even spraying it. <laughs> that thing's still fresh. I got a new one. Yeah, like, like, so did nah, you, hell no. Nah. Did you, did you, okay, you got to get up at five in the morning, go to breakfast at three to five. Uh, like, look, did you eat the breakfast? No, nah, I wasn't really going to chop that much, really. Oh. Uh, you ain't never eat that pancake and, and nah, peanut butter. Nah, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I went down there some morning, but it wasn't it wasn't too much though. Yeah. I, for one, nigga got tired of them pancakes. <laughs> and for two, I'm not breaking my sleep at no three thirty, four o'clock every day for the same thing. You so you ain't saying? gotta wake up and go. No, nah, nah, it's definitely nah. it's a hundred percent optional. But sleep late, you lose weight, you right? No commissary. Yeah, you know? right. You, you know starving for the rest of the like, day. Pretty, my stay stocked up while I was down there. You know, like, had a couple of rough patches, but it wasn't really because the money. It was like, say, for instance, man, we don't go to the store for so long. How much though. can you spend? It was 60. It's now 90, ain't it? Nah, hell no. Nah. They bumped it up again from 90 to, I think it was 105. 105? Yeah, 105. Well, nigga go and get big, big, big pastries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> two, two, three bags down the yeah. line. Nigga's like, damn, what doing me here? <laughs> Come down now. <laughs> but when you got out, did um what oh, no, change? No, 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 don't get cut. out. No, I want to talk about it. Okay. You, you niggas spreading with each other and all that. They still do that down there. What niggas bust a spread? What? <laughs> say nothing else to eat. <laughs> <laughs> niggas, <laughs> ain't nothing else to they, eat. But they took the back. They used to have them on milk cans. Now they don't give y'all nothing but plastic everything. Yeah, right? Yeah, because you know how that shit. Oh goes. yeah, Put yeah. Sit in the sock and yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Did you ever get into a fight? Nah, hell no. Nah. None of that. Nobody approached you, try to test you, none of that stuff. Look, it was, where I was it. people already knew who I was just by seeing my face. Like, I had somebody come to me like, man, what's your people name, man? Mm-hmm. I'm like, no, it's a, see, one thing about it's a gift and a curse. Because mm -hmm. some people going to love you, people going to hate you. Mm -hmm. So... I always like made sure that when I was in there, I never let people feel like they was too close to me. But at the same time, you know, like you can tell by energy. It, yeah, you know, you got real niggas down yeah. there, so yeah. it's like you know, I'm gonna rock with y'all. You know, nigga gonna fuck with y'all, but we gonna keep it here. Like y'all, that shit over with. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. But nah, hell, nah, I ain't had to. I ain't had no. They had no problem now, and that's good, man. Because I always say it's what you it's what you bring to you. If you looking for that, you can find that. Thanks. Anything you want to be down there. It's easy there. to stay out the way. It's easy to stay and, out the and way. Staying out the way don't even mean that like you tucking your tail. To no, this, not participating in the activity. It just means that 
no matter what goes on, any day, you doing what you do, you minding your business, like, that's that's what staying out the way is. Mm-hmm. Wow, and go ahead. But um, can I ask about ahead, coming ahead, out? Ahead, okay, ahead. so coming out, because how long did you stay in there for? Two years. Two years. Um, some people say two years is not a lot of time. Some people say it is. But what had changed for you when you came back out after two of years? Course. The way people work in the internet. Mm, it wasn't really like that when I left. Like, my my brother, young, he was in heat. When, when I came home, we was, we was rocking for a little minute. He was like, man, bitch, you got to work the internet. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he right. Bitch, you got to work the internet. And I, and I but he don't attention. even work the internet. Nah, he worked the internet. He do? He worked yeah. the internet. Oh, okay. Uh, but he like, yeah, but I'm paying attention. You know, like, people going viral off the internet. They like, are. Mm-hmm. And, and he making, went viral. And making right. livings off the, you know what I'm saying, off the, off the phone. Like, so that's one thing that I, and I'm still really trying to adapt to because I don't really be, like, the era I came up yeah. in wasn't really televised. You know, but so, the internet was around before you locked. You were locked up. Nah, it definitely was, but just the way that people worked. We using it nowadays. Yeah, and the things that we using it for, like, mm-hmm. for instance, like the keep leave guy. Yeah, like yeah, go to somebody's place just and eat. turn it all the way up. Yeah. Right, and all he doing is going to taste the food, taste you know the food, saying? and giving a review. Right. Yeah, leaving a positive or negative, or review negative on review. The business. Mm-hmm. But either way, these people numbers are going up. Mm-hmm. You know, this and it's the internet work. Well, you're right. And when you came home, you was more, I'm going to get back to these clothes and I'm going to do this and I'm going to sell merch. What um, did, did How's that been going for you? It's going all right. It's ups and downs. I'm I'm going through the process of rebranding right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to fuck with my people over there, SF2, Teresa and them. They was the people that was doing the, the original dicky suits back in the game. Yeah. The only, yeah. you know, she was the only person that ever really made that. Anybody else who made that. It's definitely not original. Correct. You can get it from SF2, Teresa, and Susie. It's not, not original. It's not authentic. Bro. Yeah. So yeah. that's that was that's that's what you're going with now. Yeah. What are you are you looking to brand it in? Like, it's ways to do it to where it's seasonal, to where you bring out. You know where I'm going. Where you bring out different. Say you might have some for like holiday. You call it a holiday. I ain't gonna to you. We you, got but, everything on deck all year round. But you see what I'm saying? But it, it's a way, and, and this is a mental thing too. Being that I've been dealing with this apparel, it's a mental thing. People, It gives people a reason to come. You get what I'm saying? So if you're gonna do holiday, if you're gonna do spring, if you're gonna do bullets like that where you're bringing out certain ones, it can still be the same thing, but it's hitting them at different times. You right, see what I'm right. saying? To where they feel like, okay, it's time for the, we can like get right that now, holiday. We're supposed to be rolling out the hoodies. There you go. And, and, and calling it. Sleeves, and shirts, and, the sweats. And the then calling it beanies, something. Right. Calling it whatever you want to call it, but boom, they're getting ready. They see it, it's coming, and that's how you stage it. Does right. that make sense? Yeah. And that's how they get a lot of people money. The stores, it's everywhere like that. Yeah, like marketing stunts. Different capsules. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, but it's not really, it's, I say marketing stunts, but it's not a stunt at all. No, it's though. just being precise on how you deal dealing with your product and the way that you pretty much going to present it. Right. Because there has to be something like that if you want to stage it in a way to where it magnifies the crowd whenever you it, it's hitting them a certain way. If you just bring out certain things and you ain't giving them a way to present it, and then it, it may not hit the same. And that's one main reason for me rebranding because I was I was kind of doing that. Like I said, we are gonna have I I have a hoodie for you in the middle of the summer. Yeah, yeah. But you're definitely right though. It's <laughs> always gonna be something. Even though it's like that over here, it's always gonna be some new, fresh, different. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, we. <laughs> I want to kill it. We only gonna do a certain number of these, and mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we're gonna keep uh, some exclusive drops. So I so whenever you came out. Were you, um, did you receive a, like a lot of love and support from family and friends? Or did you, cause you know a lot of times people always say when you locked up is like, when you come out, you sort of like reduce the amount of friends you have because a lot, of them, a lot of them didn't like reach out to you or support you, why. things changed yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> did that happen to you as well? Kind of, but not really like, when I came back, the people that was the people that was trying to show love that kind of wasn't really there through the process is like, all right, I'll give you this little moment, but nah. You, you know really what know what it is. Right, right. You know, and that go for 
family, family and friends, friends. Mm-hmm. like that go for that, everybody but yeah like it's it's reduced and the reason is because for one that time taught me like being isolated i get more done yeah and then two it just showed me it just showed me like it's not certain relationships wasn't what you what you, know, you thought, you thought it, was. it was so mm-hmm. it just make you fall back I, I cut a lot of people off because i just felt like a lot of people fell back so it's like it's fake fake love right because so i just with me, I, I got too much stuff no matter to do. what i'm going through. you're gonna slow me down too i got stuff i'm trying to do i don't need nothing that's not real in my path i need st- stuff that's real so i can make a, my, my my impactful moments can be real right but i like the way how you said that as in like um when you come out here is like you have so much distractions that it does slow you down. And because you are made to sit still there, it's easier for you to do, but how can you incorporate, find that uh, that alone time so you can focus and have your goals like really set where it needs to be instead of having people be like, hey, come, let's go here. Can You know what I mean? These days, I have to keep staying on the schedule. Too much freelancing, you know. That's- it's like what they saying, you know, idle time is a devil playground. Yeah, that's true. So it's like oh, oh. the, the <laughs> more that I keep myself isolated and in the solitude, it's like my best ideas, the, mm-hmm. you know, I just can step by step every day and it come with I've been on the schedule, okay. just not freelancing. Because you have, how many siblings do you have? In total, eight. That many? Yeah, yeah cause he, he he you talking about your mother? How many? How your many you have, have for you for your mom? How many? My mama have six. My dad have three. Three. Oh, okay, okay. Your mama gave birth to six. Yeah, three boys, three girls. Oh, my hat go off to your mama because <laughs> she a strong woman. They don't, make them, that they don't make them like that no more. Like dang. They don't make them like that no more. So <laughs> wow. And you Look, the oldest? Nah. For your mama? Damn, I'm a second to last. Oh, for your mama. Yeah, oh, second. so she start. Okay. My oldest brother on my mama's side is what thirty nine. Okay. Wow. So she had them back to back, close to back to back. You could say the first, the first three, they were like kind of back to back. Mm-hmm. But then the, the second Let's three, we are a little bit spaced up. Oh, okay. Like my my brother, he's seven years older than me. The the one that's on top, and then my baby sister, she five years younger. Mm. Yeah. Are you close with all your siblings? No. <laughs> okay, let me ask. Are you close with all your siblings on your mama's side? No. <laughs> She's like, on your daddy's side? No. <laughs> we we all talk. Don't get me wrong. Like, we all have relationships, but we, yeah. the the closest I am is to my, the two that I'm mentioning, the one that's seven years old and mm-hmm. the one that's five years younger, yeah. my brother and sister, them two, we the closest. I would think that you would be closer with your mama's side because as your mom, you know, you, all of them be with your mama, but since it's your daddy, you know, the different moms... So that might be a little bit. And the baby, she just up and left us, man. She just went to the Navy, so. That's oh, a good really? Thing. Yeah. Wow. She's going to see the world, but hopefully everything be straight because this government's the only one. But anyway, <laughs> let me ask you this, man. Trying to stay sane, man. How did you think that done after you had done that and then now time has passed and you had a chance to look back at it? Man, trying to stay sane, just a little history on them. I wrote that in... When I was dying. Okay. I was there standing up against the wall at like 2, 3 in the morning. Um, it was just me. I was I was in there. It's just how I felt. You know, it was like what I was going through at the moment. I'm really like, I'm one of these, like... Cause my partner here tell me all the time, like, damn, but you don't never make no turned up music, like no sad. I mean, like no club, like, but you need club song, clubs. But shit, niggas just been through it, right? Yeah. So that's how you know, like, the music for me is not really like a go to to turn up. It's it's like that's my venue. Yeah. You know, that's my therapy session. Whenever I'm, I'm just. That's like most of my songs, storylines. Let me ask you this: uh, when you and uh, D Trill did cry. Mm-hmm. How hard was it you for you to step in there and do your your feature and just add your piece to it? You see what I'm saying? Oh, man, I knocked that the night. I knocked that the same. He sent it to me on a Thursday. And shout out to Detroit. You, I, hey, I got to get him back Detroit on there. And Mississippi, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, man, Detroit shot me that song on a Thursday. I ain't even. Fuck. He was like, "Mama, be in Houston." What, Friday? I'm being Houston Friday. I'm shooting with somebody. Saturday, we'll shoot. 
He actually came here it. right after he left there. I ain't even. I didn't even. I faxed because I, I did see that he wore the he shirt. Did. Yeah, he came yeah, here he, right he after that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nah, I ain't even mess with it for the, the the Thursday and Friday. I did that like Saturday about two in the morning. Okay. Then I text him when I finished it, and I was like, uh, "You up?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm in the studio." I sit, I saw so I Facetime him. I played it for him. Cause I, I recorded myself on that, and. Uh, he like, shit, I'm fucking with it, man. But I did that. When I finally put it up, I, I did it like that. Like quick. Yeah. It was a nice song. And his old lady, she did that hook. That hook was nice, too. Hey, she got I good love good that hook. She them. actually sung it. By, I think she sung she it did. here. She did. Yeah. She did. She sung the hook right here. Um, when you when you think about it, you did another song, I Don't Want to Cry. Right. Ronnie Spencer. You with Ronnie Spencer. Trap Bar In Trap Bar 100. Yeah. Like, uh... Uh, cries in these songs, right? Like <laughs> that you didn't even think about that, probably. Look, you know what's the crazy part? <laughs> While we was doing the song, I didn't think nothing about the other song. Really? Until after the fact, and I'm riding listening to it, and I thought about it. It just done. It like, damn, I be naming this song that. It wasn't even <laughs> like not even the lyrics, you know. The, but it was just the title. It's like, damn, why we titled that? But <laughs> you know, the song is song it's organic. So I like it. I love it your verse like, on it too. I appreciate it. Yeah. That. It, it was on the right. You know, we had to get one with the OG. Yeah, Ronnie Spencer, my boy. You know, we talk. That's my guy. We gonna call at least once a month for sure. Man, it's not trying twice. To get me on something right now. I think he said he's doing like a one day remix or something. He 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 trying to get me. A he's drop a genuine. Eight on there. He, yeah yeah. He's genuine man. I like to see. Like I said, I just want you to keep working. You know what I mean. I think if I want, if I was to say, if I was manager, I'd be like, we got to do more work. We got to put out more stuff and more visuals. And we got, because y'all know the way the internet is moving, right. we, we, you got to have it like that clockwork because it's a lot of people doing a lot of things and you can get lost in the sauce. So you got to, and, and as you do it, you're going to get better. So it's best to keep it in their face because at the end of the day, you are somebody with a name. A lot of people don't have a name. Right. So you have that name and you have an opportunity to do something other people couldn't do. And that's what I've been doing pretty much on the back end for those who've been wondering. Like just putting a solid team together. So when yeah. we do move forward, we can we can push, you know what I'm saying? We yeah. look back, whoever we lose, we'll replace it along the way. But you know, just off the rip when it's time to move, we can move as we can a move. Pick. You know, everybody everybody doing what needs to be done. Um, efficiently. Yeah, and, and I'm I'm just getting my. I think I got everything I needed out of you. Um, you did go uh, on that song. Uh, you you definitely uh, went by your grandma's house. How how tough is that? You know, uh, when you go by there now, you know, and just see the house there or whatever. Do you be in Port Arthur a lot or? I slide through and slide through. Yeah, I don't I don't have nothing like that. that and that's the way I feel about home too. Yeah, like my. My old man gone from my my granny gone, my little sister not there, my brother not there. You it know, seemed like, like a ghost town, don't it? Like I real life don't have no reason to just go out there and freelance. Yeah. Like Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, grandma, you were there with her the whole time up till she passed away, right? right. Um what did she tell you? Because sometimes when someone is on their, you know, deathbed or dying, um, we tend to try to leave something that can help you move on. You want me to tell you the crazy thing? Yeah. I didn't even know my granny was sick. You didn't? I was in Houston one day. And my mama phone rang. We was in the car together. And um, there's my little brother, my Miranda. She called. She was like, man... Went to mama house, she wasn't breathing, man. She on the way to the hospital right now. We shoot from Houston immediately to PA. And 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 it wasn't too long after that, she she was gone. So you got to see her before she actually took her last breath? I, I was holding her hand while she took her last breath. Wow. You was holding her hand while she took her last breath. Did you Do you remember, like, before all this happening, maybe just talking to her in conversation and she was giving you some things that you could, you know? She was incubated. No, I was talking about no. just, just prior to that. Yeah. yeah, because she's putting on a strong front for you because you she didn't knows. know. She knows. She knows. You don't know. But you didn't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, so she's trying to be she strong. Was stage four. She had lung cancer. Yeah. It was, but it was stage four. And you four. didn't notice anything. She didn't look any different. No. Yeah, but man, so I wasn't really paying attention. Attention. Yeah. Like how I would be now. You know, like you're younger. Because even on some days, I, I, my mama pushed the pinch and I called her like, "Hey, what's up with you?" Why are you looking like that? To, you know what I'm saying? So like, you why, try to make take notice of yeah, stuff more like, now. But at that point, 
I was 13 then, 12 then, like, so I wasn't really noticing that, mm. man, Granny kind of slowing up on her head, like, you know, Granny kind of looking different. Looking face, different. Like, you know, cause, but, it, and at the same time, too, it was another situation going on, so I kind of thought it was that. We had gotten a wreck together, me and her. Okay. Wow, y'all got a wreck? We was, we was turning in somewhere. I used to go to, uh, like, the little learning center after school, Silver. So she was dropping me off one day, and we was turning in, and somebody hit us going like 60, 60. While, we, while we turning in. How long before she passed away did this happen? Maybe, probably not even a full year. So they hit on her side or your side? They hit us from the back. On the back, yeah. okay. But we was like, not going fast at all. We was turning in somewhere, right. so yeah, he smacked us from the back. We so she was going through skin. that. Did she go to the hospital for yeah, that? Yeah, she went through the whole, the whole little non-therapy, all that. But I was like, the times when I did kind of notice a few things, I wasn't thinking of it as sickness. You know, mm -hmm. it's more of like pain, physical pain. Like right. from the wreck though, that's what I'm that's thinking. That's what you're thinking. Yeah, yeah. like. But looking crazy. back now, you're like, you see where the signs were, but you just didn't realize right. it. Well, you know, God don't make no mistakes. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you he know, wasn't supposed you had to know her, it. Again, I go back to even Fred Hampton Jr. again, you know, to have somebody and to not even be able to have that person. Like, I didn't know my grandmother. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. I never got to meet her. She died of cancer before I was born. Now, I knew my great grandmother, but I didn't know my grandmother. My mother's mother, I never met. That's crazy. You see what I'm saying? And so see, one of my, my one of my, my brothers right on top of me, I think that's why I bought so tight because he was like six, seven months and his daddy got shot in the head in, mm. in the game. Mean? So like some of the loneliness like that that hoes, like sometimes we be like here, you know what I'm saying? So like we feed off each other and like he can sense like my bad days and vice versa. So like we always trying to like be there for each other, yeah. man. I, like I said, I, I just like I said, I've been wanting to do this interview. Do you think about uh, like a lot of times? You know, you even see growing up hip hop, all these shows that then came out. You, I know you've taken notice of a lot of. I was watching that when I was <laughs> when I was down the on the tablet. Okay, I was watching the one in Atlanta. It had like uh, like Angela Simmons, uh, Wiz Master Master P son. Yeah, yeah, uh, and his daughter. Bow Wow. Yeah, yeah. And them. Uh, yeah, I was watching that shit down there, and I was just like, like a lot of like. A lot you could relate to they, it. Yeah, it's real relatable. And I was like, damn, they need to have some shit like this down south. Down like, south, you know, for sure. Towards Houston or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's a lot of legends, sons, and that's right. Like not everybody not sitting in the house, you know, like. I'm one of the ones that's outside. I know for sure Lil Hawk one of the ones that's outside. Fat yeah. Pat son, Lil Pat. He be out, you know, uh, Bushwick Bill son. They, are, they down there, like, he outside. He, he be outside, like, so it's not like. The people are there, the substance is there. Facts. So they, and, it, it, and it be real, like, real shit, like, nigga don't be on no. No, 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 it's just a real situation too. To come up under that shadow, it's tough, man. You know, to have to try to understand what the people would expect out of you and, and just seeing mm -hmm. how they treat and react to you. All that's something, you know what I mean? Right. So when you think about just the whole way that they portray your dad and always you hear his name, everybody talks about him, he a legend in, in, in the South for sure, but really worldwide for me. I don't play by it wherever I'm at. That's my main thing I deal with, you know, like, how is it for you, like, like when you see people, like, always talking about your father? It's always a good thing. It's a blessing. Um, it pisses me off sometimes. I you know, think some of the some of the stuff that you don't agree with. Yeah. Or, or not even sometimes that I don't agree with it, but it just don't be certain people a place to... To talk about. Right. Like, I don't have the seniority to talk crazy to an OG, you know, that really didn't put in time and work in. That's and, real. You know what I'm saying? That's so, real. Like, I can't, I can't pull this coattail. That's not my place. It, yeah. it takes for someone of his caliber to, That's to, right. to do that. You see what I'm saying? I understand that. But a lot of people don't understand that. So, yeah, yeah it'd be them type of situations. But, you know, it's, you got to think about it too. It's the internet though. So, yeah, you got to, you got to let the troll is troll. That's probably why I go so hard for him is because of it's stuff out there that's going to try to, try to sway things a different way, to be honest with you. A lot of people now go, that's why I had to go get Bun, had to get you, had to get Heezy, had to get Bobo, had to get 
uh, Steve Bilo. Like, I want to make sure you know over Bro, here. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he been he he the first the reason he the reason I met Bo Bobo. Mm -hmm. I would have never been Steve Bilo came here before everybody because okay. Bun mentioned Bilo name mm -hmm. on another podcast on with Bi. Mm -hmm. okay. And when he mentioned it, I'm doing this and I'm just starting. And I said, man, I got to talk to Steve Bilo because I'm a fan. Like I. I already talked to Heezy, so I called. I ain't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Be at ATL. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. He's been on my show. Okay. Everybody, we all linked. So I called Heezy, and he's Leo, which that's my partner. I knew him and didn't know nobody else. And Heezy put me with Steve Bilo, and then Steve Bilo put me with Bobo, and that's when Bobo came on, and that's when he started doing all this, too. Okay. So that's how that all happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it was just important for me to make sure that this legacy and the way we looked at it in the South and what we do on Boss Talk, we represent to the fullest to where people can look and see a standard of this is what the South represent when it come down to the J Princes, the Master P's, the Pimp C's, the Bun B's. You see what I'm saying? No, and I'm an older cat, so it's like, it fits. And I'm a fan of the music. Now, the content that you Oh, they're in trouble. It's, it's definitely part it, of the culture. It, oh, it's it, they in trouble. Need to know. They in trouble. You're right. <laughs> it's a place to where if you don't know too much and you're trying to find out, you definitely can come to Boss Talk. What on what is going down? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I just love y'all, man. And I love the fact that you home. And I'm so glad. I know you ain't going back. I ain't got to worry about that. I just know that whatever you're going through, you got me here, and you can always pick that phone up. And I told, even when you came home, I texted you. And soon as you probably don't even remember that. And I texted you early on. <laughs> I'm mad because you ain't you ain't never get back with me, but you probably had a lot of things coming man, at you. When, when I first came, I did. Yeah, but I, I called He's and He's just started way. telling me. He's like, man, he, he getting it together. He's trying to figure things out. He's a counseling me, really, on the fact that why you ain't came to Boss Talk. I'm like, why this nigga ain't came to see nah, me? You want me to be a hundred. Look, I was like, when I when I first came home, I was like on some shit like man, I'm not even, I'm not popping out I'm not like as far as like you know I'm not doing no features I'm not doing no no appearances type shit I'm not doing no interviews like even with like with Donnie Houston like, shout out Donnie Houston I talked to him a couple times. Um, Couple that, times. The interview that we, the first interview we did, yeah. wasn't even, I wasn't even supposed to be in there. That was really how young he's interview. Yeah, but yeah. You know how how it go. Like, yeah, pop they pull you. He, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just. I'm glad I'm you did it. I enjoyed that interview. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it done. Yeah, but, but you gotta get used to all of that. Yeah, it, and that was one of your moments too. I was like. This might as well be one of the people that I give one of the first interviews to. Because Donnie Houston, you know, he, he do a lot of work for the coaches. So yeah, he, yeah. He Donnie Houston, it. definitely a, a dope, uh, like I said, when I came in the game, a lot of people be like, man, won't you get with Donnie Houston? Won't you get with Beehive? But I'm not a, I wasn't a DJ. Right. I'm a fan. I'm not the same as those guys. You know what right. I'm saying? I come from, I'm from the South and I'm, I'm from the streets. And so we different, bro. You know what I'm saying? We different. I know my name. Yeah, I'm not them, and they not me, but I respect them. Right. But I know my situation is not like a lot of people's situation. I, how do who thinks this is gonna blow up and people gonna be coming from miles and flying in? I I just know how to talk. I'm a country nigga. Yeah. That's all it is, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, am I right? Mm -hmm. I, I, it wasn't hard for me to do this because people call me my partner. Some of them in the NFL was in the NFL. They like man E. Some of them just regular nigga man E. You fit that uh, we been need. man. That's your man. That's who you are. I'm all like. Right. Nigga, I'm just talking, you know? <laughs> right. It's, but they appreciate you for being you. Yeah, yeah, that, and that was dope. But I definitely respect those guys, and that's why I went and got behind. That's why I picked up the phone and called Donnie Houston, and I called. Man, I've dealt with a lot of people, bro, when it come down to this stuff now. Right. But early on, it wasn't like that, you know? Different people come on here, say your dad name, you know? Uh, we've always, you know, I even from Pimpin' Ken to any of them that was on pictures with him and that was on videos with him, I'm going to represent to the fullest that portion of who he was, and that's the way I look at it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And Bun, I was nervous of, of getting that interview, and that finally happened because I was I had met Bun a few times, but just to get him and, and just to talk to him about, you know, his legacy with UGK was important for me for Boss Talk, and he gave me everything and more, and he still, I can pick the phone up and call him now, he's going to answer. So that's just how I looked at it, just trying to connect the dots so when people look at you and they look at Pimp, they don't have to just see a bunch of stuff that's not real because the Internet is blowing stuff up that ain't even, it's AI, and they just saying whatever. Anybody could do a documentary on your dad right now, right. And, and people will think that's real. You know that, right? I see it all the time. I so. had some people come to me a minute ago trying to do that. Really? Yeah, yeah. But uh, when I pitched it, when I pitched it to Bun, 
He was like, man, I'm already working on some shit. Wow. So I'm like, inquisitive, of course. I'm like, man, well, who? No. So he, sh- he, was, he didn't really say, I shot a name out there first. I'm like, well, who, such and such? And he like, nah. You just being so dry though, like. But that, that, you're think, doing it, so you doing it like with whoever you're doing it I with. I think it. it's his character. Try to, you try to give a nigga to run around, man. Come on, <laughs> boy. You think you think it's because I think it's age differences and gaps too that has to do with it. Yeah, I'm more. I think when I look at Bun, like I'm I, I'm real out. Boom, you know, I'm out here. I ain't gonna lie. I'm a different type of dude. You know. He more reserved a little bit, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm more. Yeah. It, it's just how your character reserved is, bro. Political. That's right. Yeah. I'm more. I'm flamboyant. He don't talk and I, as much. I'm right. crazy with it. I might say anything. You know what I'm saying? But then he has a lot more riding on the legacy that he built. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I respect it. And I think that's the whole game. Is just you got a situation where you can take whatever you want to do and be whoever you want to be with what God is giving you through PMC. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And you ain't got, ain't nothing can stop that. You understand what I'm saying? You his son. So that's up to you however you want to roll that dice. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I can't wait to see it. Whatever you need from me, I'm here, bro. We should sure cooking up. You know up. what I'm saying? We sure was cooking up, man. <laughs> man, we've been working. I got, uh, I don't have no date on this yet, but I got a project in the works called Can You Hear Me Now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's going to be. Pat it's going to drop this year? I'm going to try. I'm trying. I'm trying, but I'll just. I ain't gonna not tell y'all. Y'all really, too romantic with it. Really y'all probably trying to wait to the right time. I don't like that, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna drop by five of them things before the year over, nigga. Nah, offense. <laughs> I need to, but I'm. But you be, gotta have the right. You gotta have the right punch. I'm in the studio that much though, really. I ain't gonna not. You don't even Why be in not? Life be lifing. Yeah, <laughs> heavy on that. Like, like when I first came back, it was just so much that I was just. I'm not gonna say going through, but it was just a lot of stuff. That you I got kids or anything? Hell no. Oh, you good? <laughs> yeah. So you supposed to be good? How old are you? No oh kids. yeah, you ready? Nah, you you no. good? Oh, life is real, real oh, good. Mom, t- we just it's, it's patient. I'm just being patient. That's all. Well, like I said, don't don't wait to put a trigger too long because you got a lot of fans and people out here waiting to hear Facts. from you. And you're not getting no younger. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ain't gonna hold you up, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to rock? First of all, th- for top three artists of all time. Dead or, dead or alive, any genre. Yeah, way. Who? Nah, I'm, I'm saying dead or alive. Yeah, what dead or alive. You better not. You, any genre. You know, I'm over here waiting to see who you say. Of course, Pimp C. <laughs> 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 no, that's that. We ain't even you gotta. Got, you gotta, gotta say it. Gotta have, you, you gotta, you gotta, gotta <laughs> say it. <laughs> like, nah, ain't nobody going before me. Come on, man. Hey, who oh. else, man? Now we good. <laughs> man. So I'm gonna go to the West next. Okay. I'm gonna put Pac in there. Okay. Number right three. Number three. It's crazy because I think out of mind did. Who was the next one? Who was the last one? Man. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's gonna probably throw y'all out, but I'm going to Isley Brothers. Whoa! I ain't gonna lie to y'all. You love them, Isley Brothers. Man, the. Me the, too. The guitar. Like, just yeah. the feel. It does. Like, for instance. Pinpoint one song, Boys to Atlantis. Yeah. Like, just, I don't know, man. That song do something to me right there. <laughs> that, song, that song in particular, that song do something to me. Like, man. Put well, me in a whole another dimension, kind of. That's good. Wow, man. How can people get a hold of you? They trying to reach man, out. Man, y'all trying to find me, man. I'm in the street somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> do you produce your own music, too? Into it, but nah, uh, like, do you produce do you produce your own music, too? Do you produce your own music, too? I would cool and see. I'm trying to fuck around with it a little and bit. And learn more. how to, yeah. yeah but um, not yet. Not yet. But it's definitely a goal, though. Okay. But um, y'all can find me on Instagram at Pimp Chad Jr. P I M P C H A D J R. Um, my YouTube channel, Young Pimp Y U N G P I M P. Uh, I don't really too much be on that nest. Instagram, YouTube, or catch me in the streets, man. If I come to H Town next week, I'm gonna look you up. I'm gonna get your number in a minute again. I think I, I still. Really? If it's the same, did you change it? Did nah, you? it's the same. Oh, I got it. I got. My, I've been having this number for probably. Yeah, but you are gonna have to call so he can save eight your nine, number. Eight yeah, nine, yeah. Nine. Call my number when we get off here. We'll do that. All but right. anyway, man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Like Appreciate I said, if you need me for anything to promo, you know I'm out here pushing. So if it's something you're trying to get out there, you are always welcome to call me or holler at Heezy or me or, or any you know anybody that's linked to me but you got my number 
and we're gonna pu- we're gonna push it up. You know what I'm saying? Thank you so much, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What a boss is talk. And yeah. we out.